Hey everybody, welcome back to what I think is going to be the final lecture of book one, which is exciting, and today we're talking about the uh, reflexive pronoun. Okay, so the reflexive pronoun always refers back to the subject of the sentence. Okay. Therefore, the, re the reflexive pronoun has no nominative. It has no nominative case forms. And also, the singular and the plural have the same forms. This is no different between there's no difference between the forms of the singular and the plural. Okay, so let's give the forms of the reflexive pronoun. Okay, I wrote nominative, but as I just told you, there is no nominative, right? So I'm going to put a big fat line there. Right? There's no nominative. Uh, the genitive is sui. Uh, the dative is sibi. The accusative is se, and the ablative is se. So it's sui, uh, sibi, se, se. Just like if you think of um, tui, tibi, te, te, or mei, mihi, me, me, right? So this is the third person version of those pronouns, but it's only reflexive, uh, and that means it refers back to the subject. So I'm going to give you a couple examples of what this means. Um, okay. So, uh, here is a sentence in Latin, illustrating this. Okay, Narcissus, right, our famous dude who um, falls in love with his own reflection. Okay, Narcissus se amat. So, this would translate as Narcissus loves himself. Okay, so the say refers back to the subject, okay? Now, I could make this plural and say something like, um, let's see, um, query say amant. Okay, the boys love themselves. Okay. So remember, this, the forms are the same for the singular and the plural. Also, one thing that's important to know is that um, sometimes there's an extra se added. So this could be se se, and the ablative can be se se. That happens in poetry and in some prose. So just be aware if you see se se, it's just kind of a more emphatic, intensive way, uh, but it doesn't change the meaning. Okay, uh, so those are two good accusative examples, but let's give some other examples. Okay, uh, so we're going to use our friend Narcissus again. Narcissus, um, odium sui non habet. Okay, well, obviously, right? So Narcissus. Uh, non habet does not have odium, hatred for himself. Okay, so here I used it as an objective genitive, which is usually how the genitive of the um, of the reflexive pronoun is used. Okay, so that would be a genitive example. Uh, let's do a dative example. Um, Okay, so weary primia sibi dabant. Uh, the men were giving primia rewards to themselves. Okay, so here we used sibi as just a dative 
of indirect object. Right? But it's reflexive because it refers back to the subject, right? The men are doing something to themselves. They're giving rewards to themselves. Okay, and then finally an ablative example. Um, okay. Okay, so Cornelia secum semper decebat. Uh, Cornelia was always talking with herself. Or you could say to herself, or sometimes you could even make this dative and say sibi. So Latin will use... Um, uh, an ablative accompaniment for this, or also an indirect object with dico sometimes, but either way it's fine. So Cornelia was always talking with herself, so se cum is the reflexive, it's ablative, and of course the cum is enclitic, just like on first and second uh, person pronouns. Um, you can also use first and second person pronouns to uh, express a reflexive idea. So for instance, I could say scio me, and that would be uh, I know myself, right? Or I could say schemus knows. Okay, I just made that plural. We know ourselves. So first person pronouns and second person pronouns can be used reflexively if they are uh, if they are agreeing essentially with the subject and, and person and member. Okay, so here's another example. We'll just make these second person. Skis te. They would be you know yourself. Okay, and then if we made this plural, um, skitis vos. Uh, you all know yourselves. Okay, uh, and that is it for reflexives and for the book, and uh, looking forward to everyone tuning in for book two, which will come out sometime in the summer of 2015. Thanks so much.